Hello and welcome to a very patriotic episode of the Unstoppable Pigeon Podcast, the podcast that is both very stoppable and not about pigeons. It's the 4th of July! Hey! Uh, you might be hearing throughout the uh, uh, duration of our podcast recording tonight uh, the bangs and booms of fireworks in the background. Um, don't let that distract you from the uh, hilarious jokes and fun audio podcast format content that we are about to provide you. Uh, just let it fill you with patriotic spirit for America or your home country of preference. I, as always, am Matt, and joining me, of course, are... I'm Emily. And I'm Russell. And Emily gave me a bunch of shit about the way that I blow my nose today, and I want to talk about it. Oh. She told me that I blow my nose like a pansy. What is that? me she t- I, well she told he me that i blow my nose, nose very daintily she told me that i blow my nose like a pansy and then she said and i quote you blow your nose like you're afraid you're going to blow your ass out of your butt blow your ass she said <laughs> out of your butt <laughs> she told me i blow my nose like i was afraid i'm gonna blow my ass out of my butt and i don't i don't know what that's supposed to mean but she said it to me, and I think that we should talk about it. I don't know what that means either, but I want I, all I know is I want blow your ass out your butt on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh, your nose is like like a pansy. Like you're very dainty about it. There's not got, really much else to say about it. We got into a long discussion uh, after leaving uh, – our, our parents' house where we had a social distanced uh, cookout where we ate food on one table at one side of a patio and uh, and mostly you, talked about dog diarrhea. You and, yeah, you and mom and dad yeah. sat at another table on the other side of a patio and ate different food and then we talked about dog diarrhea for two hours because our mother is incapable of uh, thinking about more than one thing <laughs> at once. Uh, but on the way home in the car we got into a conversation where uh, Emily very clearly uh, elaborated on all of the things that I do <laughs> that are unacceptable to her. Uh, and one of them was the way that I blow my nose, uh, which is, as we have learned, I guess, like a pansy. Um, she also is not uh, she's not interested in the way that I cough. She doesn't like that. What You're were, just uh... very unproductive. That's all I gave you shit about. Don't go on like I'm some like abusive wife. <laughs> don't yeah. Don't act like you're gonna blow your ass out your butt. <laughs> Calm down. We know you're not capable of it, even if you could, even if you wanted to. Hey, too much of a pansy to blow your ass <laughs> out your butt. <laughs> we did have a discussion about how Emily's most like most productive, uh, most productive like podcast content does seem to be like shitting on me. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that's most of our relationship in general, though. It's just giving each other a bunch of crap. Oh well, I was gonna say I was gonna say that that is that is a true to, true to life as that is most of your most of your real life content is is shitting on me. Uh, for <laughs> for sorted things. Well, then don't do things that you can be shit upon for. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's another it. shirt. That's it. So the eleventh commandment: <laughs> Thou shalt not. Life lessons with Emily. The eleventh yeah. commandment: Thou shalt not do things that encourage. Thou shalt upon. not ask for it. Yeah. As is Emily's eleventh <laughs> commandment. Oh, goodness. Number twelve: Don't blow your ass out your butt. Don't blow your ass out of your butt. <laughs> I, I I want to defend myself about my coughing and sneezing. First of all, there's no defense for the is. way that you cough. <laughs> this is, and this is what it is. This is what it is. Sometimes I have like like if I get like my allergies are bothering me or, or like whatever, I'll have like my sinuses and my nose will like be like bothering me and itching me and like feeling f- like annoying. But I don't have like a bunch of snot in there necessarily. And the same goes for like a cough, as example, <coughs> right now. Um, sometimes I have I'll have like a tickle in my throat, or my throat will be like you know like annoying me or whatever. And like the only way to alleviate that issue is to like blow the like blow the nose or or go through the motion of coughing. And so go like go through the motion. 
Yeah, you like if your throat is tickling you, you have to like you cough to make the th- like the tickle go away. Otherwise, it continues to be annoying. So like it doesn't have to be some sort of a forceful affair every time. Sometimes you just need to sort of like do it a little bit to to, to like sort sort your business out. You just it's a production. Like every time you cough or blow your nose, it's a production. <laughs> it's in I and would you don't argue know how to it's... do it properly, so you're doing it more. <laughs> Like, for longer periods of time, more frequently would, than a normal person should. I would argue that and it's less of a production. You, you act like you're, like, out of breath after you blow your nose. You're just like, like, I don't I don't know how to explain it. Like, uh, th- I, I would argue that it's less of a production because I don't make a huge... Well, it it's lasts not like, way longer. I don't, I don't go, like... It's, like, practically <sighs> disruptive. Every time I have to blow my nose, well, I try to, like... if you did it that way, you'd be once and done. But you just <laughs> go on for, like, ten minutes, and then you're out of breath. I... All right, wait a minute. <laughs> In what what is the scenario in which I'm out of breath when I'm when I'm blowing my nose? Because I think that's I'm a fabrication. I'm gonna have to point it out the next time you do it, but you're always like catching your breath afterwards. Like, I might it like was so draining. I might like like sniff to like reset the reset yeah, the old that, nose. Yeah, that's what you do. You're just like, oh my god, <laughs> so can't breathe. <laughs> Not allowed to breathe. No breathing this is, around yeah, This is this is my marriage. Is just like <laughs> I if I. This breathe is a real the thing, way, though. I, like I, real. This is a real thing where people get like annoyed by bodily noises and stuff. Like if you sneeze too much, like I get annoyed by that. I can't. Oh yeah, there is. I can sneeze. It. I can sneeze. But that's like three a times. very very common thing. I can sneeze three times and then I and then I get told to leave whatever room we're in. Like I'm, but that's I'm, like the sound of like my like if I'm in an annoyed mood, like even the sound of my own self chewing annoys me to the point of like I stop eating. So like, this sounds like this is a you problem, like, no- like, like unnecessary noises. This is a you problem that I am suffering for. Is what I'm hearing here. Well, you married me, didn't you? Uh, <laughs> so it has become my problem. That is yet to be determined. <laughs> No, we have the legal documentation. We do, we do have legal documentation. <laughs> well, this is an audio-only podcast. So that I believed you no signed problem. as a witness for. <laughs> did I? I don't, I don't remember that, but maybe I did. Or maybe only the priest did. If I did, I my know. signature has never looked the same twice, so I can always just deny it. <laughs> deny it. Too late. It's <laughs> far too late. Yep, so uh, not allowed to sneeze in your own house. Can't breathe can't in your sneeze. own house. Can't breathe too heavily. Can't, can't cough. No. You can sneeze. Can't blow my nose a like a pansy. A amount of time. If I, if I you blow can my blow nose, your nose and cough in a better, productive manner. I better man it up a little bit. I feel like Emily's gonna start walking around with a clipboard now, and like every time, <laughs> like yeah, they have check boxes. So it's like you get a certain limit, and she'll have it like is, a pitch counter. It well, is a, a cruel irony. It is a cruel irony as the complaints that Emily has is that like <laughs> she doesn't like the way I blow my nose and I cough unproductively and I sneeze too many times in a row as a person who like actively spends like 90% of her day specifically trying to be annoying to me. <laughs> uh, so, so it's, I don't know if that means I'm winning in that, like I'm annoying her without having to put in the work. Uh, <laughs> Or if it means that my life is just double, uh, double hell because not only can I not catch a break by just making like normal human sounds, uh, she also spends most of most of her days trying to figure out things that will like actively make my existence more irritating. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I for- I kind of lost my train of thought, but I was gonna say let's let's get the run through. What is like your daily? <laughs> So routine she, for annoying okay. Matt. Well, and I will say, well, I want to hear. I, I want to hear what she. Her, okay. Yeah, I I did say like I'm. I think that your worst character quality is the way that you blow your nose and cough. So I mean, if that's your worst character quality, <laughs> you absolute monster. <laughs> right. I mean, like I'm that I'm throwing you a bone there. Like, be oh, happy about you. that. <laughs> and well, go I, on. What's your daily routine for annoying oh, me? I mean, I don't. I don't think. Do I have a daily routine? Would you like me to tell you the what daily are, what routine? Are, what are, I was going to say, what are some go-tos you know that will annoy Some you? go-tos. Um, well, I call his name a lot. <laughs> I don't necessarily need him for anything. That, okay, that was my number one thing um, that I was going to say. 
she it's likes more like, she likes to I, call me to like summon me to places from oftentimes like from across the house floor. a different floor of the house from across the house while i am like actively doing something sometimes actively <laughs> doing something that she has already asked me to do to then like and then summon me somewhere else i will call him like i'll be in the bathroom and i'll holler for him but it, our downstairs bathroom has an exhaust fan attached to the light, and so you can't really, like, hear much over it. So I I don't always hear him respond, but then sometimes I do hear him respond, and I act like I haven't. <laughs> but I just, like, continue to, like, repeat myself and collar for him. <laughs> She does, oh. yeah. She insists. I do that. She insists on like having conversations with me, where she'll like ask me a question and then I'll answer, and then like whether she's heard me or not, she continues to act as if she can't hear me. And that's then, another. That's another. Big like one. last night, I got home. I worked like fourteen hours or whatever, and I hadn't seen him all day. So I told him to like come over to me because I wanted to show him something, and then I acted like I had something to show him once he came over, and like was distract. I acted like distracted. For yeah, like she, 10 like, minutes, and like, I'm like, oh, hold on. Like, one, I was like brushing, I was like, let me just brush my teeth really you quick, and then I'll your, show you. You're blow drying your hair. Yeah. She, she called me from another room. She goes, hey, I have to show you something. And I, so I like, I was like playing a video game. I like put it down. I get up. I go out of the, the room. I go to where she is, and I'm like, what? And she's like, hang on. And then she like does something. And then I'm like, what did you need to show me? She's like, here, look, look, hang on. And then she starts like blow drying her hair, and I'm like, is the thing she needed to show me a bit like is it is blow drying her hair the thing I was supposed to see? What is she like? What is she showing me here? And then she finally like she finishes and she I was like I was like what did you need to show me? She was like nothing. I just wanted to make you come over here. Well, no, I just said I just wanted to like see you. <laughs> uh, so... when, I, when I go into the bathroom, she likes to she likes to stand outside the door <laughs> and talk to me. Well, that's uh, another one of your character flaws. You spent a lot of time. Going to the I, I don't is the thing and it's always poorly timed like we're about to do something and you're like oh i have to go to the bathroom and then you're in there for like 15 minutes i swear i've never been in the bathroom for 15 minutes at a time in my life well it's an obnoxious she likes to she likes to knock on the door and and uh talk to me when i'm in the bathroom she likes I don't know, to what else can i do you're a big fan of like putting like you'll put like your foot you'll you'll like i'll be sitting on the couch you'll Mm -hmm. like lay down on the couch and then you'll like put your foot like on like in the vicinity of my face (laughs) or like you'll do some other thing where you're like sort of like sort of like touching me but not just like generally try to disrupt like my peaceful existence as much as you possibly can so yeah on your toes (laughs) So what I'm learning here, and I'm glad we have it on record, um, <laughs> is that Emily is an insane person. She's an insane person. An I have said on person. multiple, like, those on are multiple the act- occasions. Those are the, those are the actions the of an insane person. The actions of a criminally, like a criminal maniac. She's a, she's a crazy person. And I have, I've said on multiple occasions, like, I am going to be great when we have kids. Because like I these are the, the these are like the behaviors these are the behaviors of but like I give a you toddler. credit for putting up like, with me all the she, time. Like, <laughs> like, she, like earlier, I was on the couch and I didn't want to get up, so like I made you like drag me off the couch. She, yeah, she just like and she like <laughs> makes me she, she, she'll like make me get up and get her a cup of water. Last night she made me like she forgot that she has like a stomach pill that she takes. She made me like go downstairs and get her stomach pill and bring it to her, and I had to like bring her a pill yeah, and a glass and of I was water exhausted. while she was in bed. Like <laughs> she just does all of the things that like I uh, that was asking you to do me a favor because I was exhausted after right, my shift. That's, that's and went not to a bed. great. That, okay, hang on. That's no, maybe that's, that's not, not a, a prime example all. because in that case you were like very tired. But don't act like you don't on a regular basis, like, forget things downstairs and make me go get them when, like, you are perfectly capable of doing so yourself. That's probably my number two. Behind behind the number one being, like, constantly summoning me for things that, like, I am not needed for or, like, that you don't actually (laughs) need. You're just trying to annoy me. The other thing the other thing I'm highly irritated by is, like, constantly, like, asking me to do things that you are perfectly capable of doing yourself and like just don't want to so i have to like 
whatever it is, I have to, like, take care of my own needs and then also your needs because you refuse to do it for yourself. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was the most disingenuous sorry that anyone's <laughs> ever heard. That was essentially the subcontext of that, and, and you could... I You're not going to, but I want you to edit in uh, the clip from the previous podcast because it was just y'all pieces of crap. Yeah. That was... That was <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was the word that she said was sorry the what she meant was suck it nerd well i want to yeah. say that you said all i do is shit about like shit on you and i just was shitting on the way that you cough and sneeze you're shitting on the way that i am essentially the way that you <laughs> the way that you are <laughs> is actively so like destroying you can be me. as sensitive <laughs> as you want but uh. I think bottom line you're the one who shits on me well just as, as much as we said that's what marriage is it's just it's just tearing each other down every day every day of your life uh goodness okay. well on that note i think it's time for us to move to my my one of my favorite segments that i do uh that i think i did once uh called <laughs> Uh, crowd tangled web I weave. Crowd favorite that we did one time. Tangled, yeah, tangled, web, tangled I web I weave. Which is the portion of the show where I have found something on the internet and then I make Matt and Emily and the listeners listen to it. <laughs> uh this is this is a short one. Um this is uh this is a Reddit post. The original poster's uh, name is Surprise Dentistry. Oh. <laughs> okay. It has not has nothing to do with the content, but that's just I want to give credit where credit is due. Surprise. Uh, so industry. so uh I assume both of you are if if you haven't seen them, you're at least familiar with the motion pictures, uh The Prince of Egypt and Shrek. Correct? Yes. I don't know about the other one. The Prince of Egypt is It's the story uh, of Moses, uh in the same art style as the uh the road to El Dorado. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all you really need to know is that, yeah, it's like a biblical story also made by DreamWorks. They're made by the same company. Uh, so here's the post. Sometimes I think about the fact that DreamWorks was working on the Prince of Egypt and Shrek at the same time and would apparently send people to work on Shrek instead of Prince of Egypt as a form of punishment. And then there's a follow up post that says the night I posted this. I couldn't find a source, and I've been wondering ever since if I just made it up <laughs> in some kind of weird fever dream or something, but no, it's real. And then here is uh, a quote from an article from somebody who worked at DreamWorks at the time. It says, As Shrek floundered, its status as the ugly stepchild at DreamWorks was reinforced. It was known as the Galu Galug, Gulag, said one, I think is Gulag, the word looking for. said one animator. If you failed on Prince of Egypt, you were sent to the dungeons to work on Shrek. <laughs> the, the assignment was referred to as being Shreked. Oh, get, get Shreked, animator. <laughs> Better check yourself and, before you uh, Shrek yourself. A, a, a later down post uh, commenter then said, maybe that's why Shrek turned out so good, because everybody worked real hard on Shrek to be allowed to go back to Prince of Egypt. <laughs> So I just, I just really enjoyed the fact that Sh Shrek was used as a form of punishment, <laughs> which uh, maybe is is like a uh, precursor. No, not a precursor. Um, well, this was a fun thing that I just said and and interjected into this conversation. Uh, what do you have to add, Emily? <laughs> bad for Shrek. You feel bad for Shrek. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well. Well, I thought that was going to... I thought that would have been funnier, inspire, and it yeah, wasn't. Was say, I thought that would have inspired more commentary. <laughs> uh, I got I got lost well, I in the know weeds. I Prince of Egypt. Prince of Egypt is like a... Uh, so, like I said, it's the story of like the... Um, Moses. At least I think it... Yeah. Like, so it begins with like... Yeah, it begins with like young... Like young hot Moses. Uh, well, it begins with baby Moses. Uh, it begins with baby Moses, but that's like a brief part. <laughs> It yeah. begins with young hot Moses uh, and like the Pharaoh's firstborn son and they're like buds and they're causing mischief in Egypt. Uh, and then Moses uh, gets Mosesified uh, and, and is supposed, like, supposed to lead the lead the uh, the Hebrews out of Egypt. Um, and, and then it like it goes through the it, it sort of like goes through the story of like the the 
the plagues, like the plagues of Egypt. Um, and then the follows like, uh, you know, Moses, like leading the Jews from Egypt yeah, and the parting of the Red Sea. And I, does it like end ish with the 10 commandments? I forget. I haven't seen it in like, I don't years. remember. It's been a long time. I I think the, like the general idea seems to be that that's like, seems to be more of like a serious project of like, Oh, we're, yeah. you know, like this is, and it was like, it was like actual cartoon animation if i remember correctly where shrek and, was yeah, like and, and like the CG. music is the music is like very serious like like good like hardcore music like yeah so, i mean i think music. the idea is that if you're like an animator and you're working on this like serious like piece of art and then yeah. like you get in and trouble go, they send you yeah. to go to the like the dumpster production they're like oh go work on this like dumb idiot like farting ogre donkey sidekick having good, onion though. eating like so say what you want but like i would i'm shrek is no, 100 percent like Re-rock shrek ability. like shrek is the better movie at the end of <laughs> yeah. the day but yeah. it's just like that's like i think that's the idea behind like this is why you go to the like they like that's why it's a punishment is because it's like yeah Oh, here, like, this is, like, this is some some dumb thing about a smelly, like, ogre for children. Uh, but I... <laughs> like, the punishment getting Shreked. Uh, yeah, you yeah. get Shreked. It's yeah, you get pretty good. the basement. <laughs> I wonder if, like... Nope, I got nothing. I'm not, uh, really not bringing my A-game tonight. Uh, from that, what I hear is, uh, Emily is, b- between now and next podcast, has to watch Prince of Egypt. Uh, I don't know that I, yeah. uh... Very we'll okay, good that at watching I... movies. I... Means I have to watch Prince of Egypt, and I don't want to watch mm-hmm. Prince of Egypt again. Like the one or two times I saw it, like did. twenty years Why ago. Why did you? I was gonna say going to Catholic school, they yeah, showed we were, it like we a thousand raised, times. Yeah, we were raised Catholic, like as if every, I wasn't. Yeah. Prince of like, listen, Prince of Egypt. Don't even get me started on like Prince of Egypt is at least like not a like a total burning sack of trash, like. The amount of Veggie Tales movies that I've been subjected to in my life, yeah. I don't even like. I don't even want to talk about. I, the movie I watched the most. I don't know why, but but growing up, that's the in school, they decided to play Cool Runnings a thousand times. Yeah, we definitely. Watched I think. Cool Runnings. I think maybe nobody has ever seen Cool Runnings in a movie theater. I think the only way that anyone has ever seen Cool Runnings has exclusively been on, like, a the large old TV school... TV that got rolled t- in. Yeah, like a, ro- a, t- a tube TV on a rolly cart may actually be the only way that anyone has ever seen Cool Runnings. I love I, that movie. I, like, I, don't have the, I don't have the science to back that up, per se, but it feels true. It's one of the things where I'm like, I have seen Cool Runnings a lot, <laughs> Not my choice. <laughs> Aww, it's I a good movie. I watched it with my I mom like it. for some reason. No, I'm saying recently. I like it, but like the amount of times I've seen Cool Runnings, not it's of my lot. own volition, <laughs> is heavy. insane. There's definitely movies that are like that, where it's like, so Cool Runnings is one for sure. Um, mm. for me, another one is Elf. Oh, I yeah. would yeah. say I would probably say Even in high school they would play Elf. Eighty-five to ninety percent of the like times that I have seen Elf, it was it was like when the science teacher was sort of hung over close to Christmas time. It was like just watch, just watch Elf. We're or not like, doing anything. Usually today. the last day of school before break. The last day of high school. school like, yep. Everybody played Christmas movies. Elf. I'm trying to think like, what I've other movies. I've the point where I've seen I've seen Elf so many times. Like I I can't really enjoy Elf anymore. That's that's largely how I feel about. Uh, most Christmas movies because there are yeah. uh, mm-hmm. there are precisely three Christmas movies um, and everything is just very like it's just extrapolations on those three Christmas movies. There's there's Santa's in trouble because not enough people believe anymore. That's Christmas movie number one. Yep. There <laughs> there is um, children who are, are having antics uh, during Christmas. Um, that's Christmas movie number two. Um, and then Christmas movie number three is, uh, I am a youngish single person going back to my hometown, uh, and I meet, uh, either I was fat or the person that I, uh, knew was fat and are now super hot and we are going to discover that we're in love, uh, and it's Christmas time. Those are the, those are the three Christmas movies that exist, um, and there are no others, um, anywhere out there. 
as as far again, I don't have fourth the science one. on that. Yeah. There's a, but I think there's that's a fourth true. one. There oh. is a fourth one. Somebody hates Christmas. Oh, there is somebody hates Christmas. And then they have to learn to love Christmas. I yeah. That's I feel like that is a common like that's usually a common variant of um Pants is in trouble. No, more that's that like inevitably somebody hates Christmas because they got their heart broken. Uh and then they you know what maybe maybe the uh maybe the I'm falling in love with my uh the person who I never knew was a romantic interest. Maybe that is a subgenre of someone hates Christmas. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, there we go. We've you solved all wrong, Christmas movies. But, okay. All right, well, what are some other Christmas movies? It's a Wonderful Life doesn't fit into any of those. It's a Wonderful Life. Mm, I've it's only a Wonderful seen, Life is sort of... I've only, I've only a seen life. It's a Wonderful Life once, and it was in June, <laughs> because somebody made me watch it. It's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful Life is a variant on Someone Hates Christmas. Because it's, it's Christmas time, and that guy's what like, everything, everything sucks. What about White, White Christmas? Uh, White Christmas is uh, White Christmas is a variant it's on Santa's Christmas and, shenanigans one. Is it is a Christmas shenanigans one? It's also it's a, it's a mixture between Christmas shenanigans and Santa's in trouble. Uh, the part of the 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 part of Santa, of course, in this uh, in this particular film being played by that hotel or whatever that they're trying to save. Uh, I would say no. I would say it's they not, it's, they it's, find it's the, the love of Christmas. Guy. I would say it's the yeah the commanding officer guy. Sure, whatever it's it is, like Santa. Santa or whatever. He yeah, yeah fills in for Santa, and he is saved through Christmas uh, by everybody getting in the Christmas spirit and putting on a putting on a Christmas show. Yep. <sighs> That's not to say that there are not good movies in the subcategories. There's just right. Those are There's the just not very many of them. Well, this has been fun. Uh, do you want to do guy advice next, or do you want to do uh, let's settle this? What do you think? Never. I'm defeated. You're defeated? Yeah. Because we shit-talked Christmas too much? You should talk to me. You should talk to Christmas. <laughs> to be fair, this podcast started off with shitting on Matt. So. <laughs> yeah, I like... I, yeah, I but open it things was up much with some nicer shitting. shit upon. Like, like I said, I was just critiquing the way you blow your nose and cough. <laughs> and breathe and sometimes. Ex- and exist. And exist. <laughs> Well, if you exist, and I was just, and I was just extrapolating <laughs> upon the things that uh, make you an insufferable nightmare to live with. <laughs> to be but fair, are, you but started, are also, you started... <laughs> but are also the things that endear you to me and make you make you uh, one of a kind. And I wouldn't have it See? any other way. Is it's that better? Did that crime. hurt? What? Did that hurt? It did. It's weird. My nose did start bleeding just now. Uh, which? <laughs> well, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't mind hearing about it. She just doesn't want to hear the sound of it. Right. <laughs> no, no. She definitely minds hearing about it. Like, she, <laughs> I, I am not allowed to uh, bleed, ha- bleed, or have a- aches or pains or uh, ailments. She, she gives me a lot of hard. She gives me a lot of hard time and makes fun of me for having ailments. Literally everything is an ailment to you. <laughs> well, that's. I can't help it that I have my body is crap and I am. <laughs> On a short path to the grave. <laughs> yep. Uh, well, what do we what do we want to do? Do we want do we want to do let's settle this? Do you want to do guy? We want to finish with guy advice. Um, we can do more than one guy advice too. I have a couple here. The guy advices um, are always good. I hate to like I hate to use up multiple ones in like one episode. Well, let's just see how long one of them takes, and then we can. Okay. This okay. one's good, and I will say, I was very disappointed because you know how like when people ask for advice, like from like newspaper columnists or whatever, like radio yeah, shows. crazy sad people. They'll like, <laughs> oh my God, they will sign themselves. Like they will sign a name related to like the topic. Yeah, like please, please help me with this thing signed uh, banana yeah. stuck in anus. Yeah. Right. So this one was a total missed opportunity. And I will, t- I will tell you what I feel this person should have signed it as at the okay. end. Okay. My husband picks his toenails while watching TV and leaves the remnants on the couch. It will periodically find large chunks of toenails randomly on our couch. I have explained to him how gross and disturbing this is and politely requested he stop this habit, which gets repeatedly ignored. 
I have begun to passively aggressively handle this by putting them in his coffee in the morning. <laughs> I know this is wrong, but get relief in making him discover his own toenails in his coffee. What else can I do? How can I get him to understand that he needs to stop this? And I wanted the person to sign it, nail in the coffee, instead of nail in the coffin. <laughs> what did they actually sign it? I don't remember. It was probably like... Um disturbed wife uh, so i would like to i would the, like to redact all of the things that i listed uh about <laughs> as were, that were negative attributes about my uh, my wife who is in comparison to this person uh, a perfect human being who has never done anything wrong ever and i greatly appreciate uh because <laughs> this person is a goddamn psychopath toenail guy or the lady putting the toenails in the Coffee. The guy, the toenail guy is slightly gross. The person who is collecting them and putting Eat them in coffee. his morning coffee is a fucking maniac. What do they float? They would float, right? Here's the other thing. She's done this and she's still asking for advice. So the toenails in the coffee have not stopped the action. <laughs> Which is insane to me. <laughs> yeah, that's what I took as the craziest part of this. She's like, I don't know what else to do. I've already... <laughs> Put the toenails in the Is, coffee. Was toenails, didn't work. was toenails in the coffee the first place she went, or are we just joining this story after? I like, think. Like, is, has there been well, a long line of attempts? She politely asked him I to think stop, she, and he okay, ignores her. Okay, but they're like. There's a long, long walk yeah. between politely asking someone to stop picking their toenails and, like, put, like collecting and sneaking them into food and beverage items. Like, Bad. what What happened? I want to know what happened in between these two places. Yeah. Also, I think she should have sound, signed it Tony the Tiger. Gross. Uh, <laughs> yeah, when it would have been spelled T-O-E-N-I. Yeah. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> um, so, it's pretty bad. Okay, That's I've, pretty I've, bad. I'm, I got so caught up by, like, how gross this is. I, like... What's the the actual question that we're trying to solve here is how does she, how does she get him to stop this? Yeah, murder suicide. I want to know how do like, I get him to understand to, that he needs to stop? Okay, so how often can this dude be doing this? Like how fast yeah, is his toenails thing, like, growing? Yeah, like mm. how often is he doing this? Like, well, at how... least once a month, probably. Because here's because here's the thing. Uh, this question does resonate with me a little bit. I know, it, I knew it was. <laughs> you knew this was coming because somebody. Well, we've but already my we've, toenails. We've discussed already discussed. Toenail. We've already discussed the toenail shedding situation that's happening but with his nail polish. But at least that's paint chips. And his paint chips. Yeah. No, what Emily has a <laughs> no, habit of doing. Else. She lays oh, on the boy. she lays on the couch with one of our dogs. <laughs> Who like happens to have like kind of flaky the toenails? Most I guess the most nails in the world. And she like picks flakes off of his nails and then like <laughs> puts a little pile of them on the coffee table. And just just like this woman and her husband, I have asked her like, please stop. That's disgusting. Can you like if you're going to do it, throw them out? Why are you doing this? Why do you hate me? Do you want me to throw up? So like, do I, I will need to start? Occasionally, like, put them on you. Too. Yeah, and sometimes she'll put them is, on me. What I'm hearing is Emily's a crazy person. Yes, you need to you need to put them in her coffee. Uh, yeah, I, like, am I gonna have to start slipping <laughs> them into I things? Luckily, I don't that, drink like, coffee. Yeah, but you make me make your lunch on uh, too frequent of <laughs> occasion for you to be this comfortable <laughs> about the possibility of me. Uh, slipping Someone's having your food. a tuna and toenail <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> You would never do that to me, though. I would not, because as established, uh, that's bad. I am, un unlike that's this really woman, bad. I'm not a maniac. Yeah. What? Also, like, I don't know how the mind goes from asking him politely didn't work. Put them in his coffee. Yeah, like she's been pu putting dog <laughs> like toenails. Zero to sixty. She's been putting dog toenails on our coffee table for literal years at this point, and it's been annoying me that entire time. Never. Never once it's in never my escalated. life have it has it occurred to like escalate to trying to poison her with them. So I think the well, I, would say, like, I think ultimately maybe... the answer here is that they should get a divorce because that's the, yeah. like, clearly he's a disgusting animal and she should be in an asylum. But I was gonna say like, <laughs> like there are scales that would be a little more okay. Like if she was just like I put them on his pillow so he has to deal with them. <laughs> 
Yeah, but not he's not like, like consuming it, them. Yeah, right. yeah. Not, not consuming them. What about public shame? Like she could post about it on Facebook. <laughs> To what, take pictures, friends, take call pictures his mother. of his feet in, while he's sleeping. Yeah, I call think, his mother. I think there's but a, see, there's if a... I did that to Matt, he would do it more probably. Yeah, that's if right. I yeah. told your mom, I think there's a, a I think there's a bonding moment here. I think you buy him a you get like a, a gift certificate coupon for like a couple's spa day, and then you like yeah. sneak him into a pedicure during this couple's spa day to like take care of those bad boys. Yeah, because I like I can't imagine once the That's toenails have been like clipped and maintained, there is like I feel like you've eliminated the possibility for picking at that point. Yeah, if they're in, just well manicured. In a way, I'm glad she reached out for advice because if she went from asking politely to toenails and coffee, if What's she hadn't next? have gotten suggestion, her next step might have just been like feet cut off. Right, ne- really left cut to her, left feet. to her own devices. Very shortly, that man is dead. There is yeah. like, there is no other way that this situation continues continues to escalate other than like murder. He'd like uh, wake up like in a chair or some, like handcuffed to a chair or something, and it would be like that scene in um like Ozark, and she's like trying to like pick his nails off or something crazy. Yeah, gross. I was thinking more of uh, what's the uh, what's that movie with um. What do I want to say? Ed Harris, where mm-hmm. she like she like ties him up in bed and she puts that she puts the board between his feet. Oh, you know I'm talking about that's um, misery, right? Misery. Yeah, misery. Yeah, it'd be like misery. I was gonna say, it's like, like we're we are barreling towards a misery situation <laughs> no, here, where um... she's gonna break both of his feet with a baseball bat. It's not oh, Ed Harris. My God. Is it Robert Duvall. No, it's not Robert Duvall. It's the same guy who's in Elf. The dad in Elf. Is it? Yeah. I'm looking at that. He also plays Sonny Corleone. Oh, yeah, Corleone. it is. James yeah. Can? Oh, no, that's the character's name. Paul Sheldon. Yeah, Paul Sheldon. He's, yeah. Uh, why Paul Sheldon. He's, he's also the dad in Elf. Why did I think... Why did I think Ed... Well, I guess... The, I guess. I mean, I guess he's sort of like an old, bald, white guy. I don't know why I thought Ed Harris was in was in Misery. Uh, anyway. No, Ed Harris is... Yeah, no. Uh, he's too cool. For why... Well, I don't know. Why is all I have to ask uh, of this situation. Um, I think I think if if she, like she is crazy enough that she went from we asking him to stop. We shouldn't make that assumption. I, regardless of if there were steps in between, the fact that it got to putting them in his coffee before she thought to seek out advice uh, and the fact that it apparently, as Russell pointed out, has not put a stop to the situation. I think there mm-hmm. is nothing that can be done in there beyond saving. They're very incompatible. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, truly, truly a revolting situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I think that is our guy advice is that they can't be helped. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's depressing. That is that is a little depressing. Uh, well, this has been a very argumentative uh, episode of... I think that's... I think we're starting to find our stride here is that it's all about... Uh, arguing about arguing about things yes well it's really Uh, you two arguing and me having to listen to it well (laughs) well the intro is us two arguing every week but the uh the the meat of the podcast does seem to be settling into a group of like settling 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 disputes we find on the internet Um, yeah which we can continue to do in a segment of let's settle this so as we established last week in our first shot at this uh it was a variation on a game that I have been uh, wanting to sort of trying to figure out. Um, I did find a website where people can post disagreements that they are having with each of their perspectives, and then the universe, the internet, can vote. Um, last week, we – it was sort of – they're not all winners. Uh, last week, we tried to just, like, randomly go through and see what they were going to come, come up with, uh, and they, we learned pretty quickly that there's some real stinkers in there. Uh, and a lot of ones that are extremely obvious that one person is wrong mm-hmm. and full of shit. Uh, so I have combed through in advance this week to try and find some ones that I thought were a little bit more interesting. Maybe a little less obvious or a little, like, uh, just made for better, made for a better read. Uh, so I've gathered a couple of these and we can, we can read through them, we can debate, and then we can cast our vote, and then I have written down what the uh what the internet uh how the internet voted Mm -hmm. um so the first situation this is an argument about 
the thermostat. We live in Arizona. The electric bill can be expensive in the summer. However, the temperature should not be set to an uncomfortable temperature for the average person. Is 80 degrees an uncomfortable temperature for the average person? The wife says... She thinks 80 degrees is an acceptable temperature, and most people keep their homes in that in Arizona in the summer. Really? The husband says 78 degrees. 78 degrees is still too warm for the average person, and chocolate melts in the cupboard, but I could at least live with that. Do we vote husband or do we vote wife? Shakti Singh, he would be, like, willing to compromise at 78. Uh, personally, like, I think, yeah. For both, me, like, both too hot. Even for me, I like 76 and i'm always old but yeah but both of these are far too hot like if like you have our bedroom set to like 64 i would sleep with the bedroom set at 62 if i had my my way uh and science backs me up that does appear to be the ideal sleeping temperature of a bedroom for human beings that you get the best night of sleep uh there have been studies i cannot cite them but i am right so don't question me <laughs> you're all about the fake news tonight well your dad's about the fake news on that one because he's the one who told me about that was he yeah oh oh yeah he, told, he was he told yeah. me that the, he read that thing and then i started doing it and i was yeah. like he's right i sleep better <laughs> it's in your head i well, would say the husband like if chocolate is melting it is too hot it's too, to it's too goddamn hot in your house if chocolate is melting yeah you're covered all right, that is that's a, that was a pretty easy one. That was a softball. Uh, so if we vote with the husband, seventy five percent of people also agree with us that it is too goddamn hot. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, the situation: I moved a plant to a shelf yesterday. My wife went crazy because she thought I was going to bin it. She will not apologize. The wife thinks that she's fine because he has binned plants in the past, so no apology is needed. Husband says he thinks he deserves an apology because all he did was move the plant. What do we think? And depending I guess on how, we want to know what is the on how, of the freak out. <laughs> depending on how Emily answers this, I'm going to have something to say. <laughs> uh, it just says he moved a plant to a shelf. It specifically says my wife went crazy. So <laughs> I feel like that's an over exaggeration. <laughs> and I know, like this is like this is kind of like you tidy things up and throw things out and don't admit to it. So then when something important goes missing, I automatically assume you've thrown it away. This is true. That happens. So it's like a similar situation. Well, the, you, but the situation here. If you for here... once like didn't throw it away, I'd be like, well, you normally do. So let's move yes, on. This exact thing has happened to us because sometimes <laughs> I move things and then they get misplaced. But sometimes you just can't find things or like I didn't throw something out. And you give me a bunch of crap and you yell at me and then it turns out you like it was where you thought it was and you have never once been like oh sorry i just yelled at you a whole bunch i think at a certain point you become like comfortable in your relationship enough to know like i do i am sorry if i freaked out a little bit uh well i look forward to <laughs> i look forward to the first time that that we get to that point in our relationship because it's gonna be really uh, uh i am beginning to get worried that russell has died i don't know i, I don't think she like i'm sure that she is sorry but i think there's like a privilege in marriage where like you don't always have to say it <laughs> okay that is a very that is a very <laughs> wife and also a very person who is wrong uh opinion that you have which is which is the opinion that i thought you would have and was and i was going to call you a liar if you if you well, said the otherwise fact that, like <laughs> she has proof he's done this in the past like also, why is he just, like, throwing away plants that are perfectly fine plants, unless they're, like, dead? I don't know. We don't know what kind of, we don't know what kind of, like, plant situation these people have in their house. We can only And we go don't on the know how and... bad the freak out was. I feel like it would, if, if it was just, like, the standard, well, you normally do throw things, like, you normally do throw the plants out, like, how, how, how I am with you, like. How bad could she have freaked out? when the simple solution was him just going like, no, it's over here. Well, I'm not, yeah. Like, how long could she have exploded before he was like, it's over there? The way that this is phrased is not that she thought he did throw it away. It's that she thought that the act of him moving it was a precursor to throwing it away. It doesn't state at any point that she thought it was missing. Well, that's, that's weird. I feel like this is <laughs> you probably moved it. a that means you're going to throw it away. I, I'm siding with the wife because I feel like he wrote this, and so it's biased by him saying, like, she went crazy. Like, she probably didn't actually go crazy. She was probably just like... You better not be throwing that 
away like you did the last time. Okay, well then who do we side with? I'm the wife because I'm sure the the husband is being biased. Emily sides with the wife. Russell, how do you side? I guess, I don't know, I don't want to side with either of them. <laughs> like, this is an A-B choice type of situation. He's a guy that just like throws away plants like a schmuck. <laughs> it's she... his own fault for like her reacting poorly. <laughs> That is in, a, in, in an inaccurate. <laughs> but I like to think that there's like there's another layer to the story where like she keeps like insisting on getting plants and then like she just they just die because she doesn't take care of them. And then he throws them out. And yeah. she's Like, how did you how could you throw that out? You're like, it was dust. <laughs> <laughs> it was... Well, believing that she actually went crazy. I guess I'll side with the wife. Okay. Well, you are both incorrect. 80% of the internet side of the <laughs> husband, uh, as do I, uh, because I know this pain. I know this pain very well. <laughs> if I do, I think that if I do react, like, really poorly, I will say to you, like, sorry, I, that was I will say an I overreaction. Only half, I was pulling a map and only half <laughs> listening when you read the prompt in the first place. So... so Here's what I like. Here's what I will say: as I don't want to give it, I don't want to give a skewed impression of our of our relationship. Uh, like, if you have really lost your temper on, on me on something, and then like learned that you were incorrect or whatever in the like in the past, you act like you will apologize, like a normal human being would. Uh, but you, it is, it is. I knew that that was what you were going to approach this with because that is a very that is a like a very telling opinion you thought that like she had she had to have like freaked out to a certain level and been like a certain point of aggressive before like it mattered that she was wrong and ha then thus had to apologize yeah uh, this also reminds me of one because of my you do favorites. you do that to me where you're like you moved my thing and you lost it and you're always doing it to me and then i'm like mm -hmm. it's right there and then you're like well, you usually move my things, and that's probably why I couldn't find it. And that's the end of the conversation. And she never is like, oh, sorry, I was like, <laughs> sorry, I assumed that you were a piece of crap, uh, and I was just that, wrong. Uh, that, that reminds me of the time, uh, one of my favorite stories, uh, the time Emily gave me sass because I asked a question and she thought you were the one who asked the question. <laughs> oh, man. So she, like, snapped at me and I was I like, oh, my, oh, my God. I not remember what the, what the context was. I was, we had come know. over and I asked, where's, are we saying, oh, I had to say the dog's name? Oh, yeah, yeah. You were like, where's, where's, I forget which one it was, but it was like, where's one of the dogs? I know which one yeah. it was. Are so we keeping oh, dog I mean, names no, as secret? It doesn't, it doesn't oh, yeah. I was like, oh, where's Griff? Oh, <laughs> that's right. And then she that's was right. like, he's out. So she just something to the fact of like, he's outside. I like, I just told you something She's like that. outside, which you would know because I already told you if you had been listening to me, if you ever listen to me when I tell you things. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Russell and I were both like, whoa! Yeah, what? <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'll just leave. Like, I just <laughs> walked through the door. I was like, I guess I'll just go home now. <laughs> and then when she was confused, I was like, he said that. I was like, it wasn't even me. Well, it sounded like you, and I just answered that for you. Oh, man. Uh, and in Emily fashion, I don't think she apologized. She, no, I think, no, I think she, did. Did. she probably she apologized probably, to me. She probably she, apologized to you, yeah. She was the fact that it was like, but you like, still, like... You, you yeah, she you. apologized to you, and then she turned to me and went, I know you didn't say that, but that's some shit that you would pull, so just let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> that we never talked about it again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, situation three. <laughs> this one's I, I they have I, I they get progressively uh more more tenuous as we uh as we go on here. Uh, I don't know if we want to do all of these. I'll I can save some for next time. Uh, but this is where it starts to get uh tense. My boyfriend got his ex pregnant. Ooh. They also have a two-year-old together. I took him back because I love him. She is six months pregnant, and they went to take pregnancy photos together. My thing is, uh, some of the spelling on this is real, uh, real poor. Um, my thing is, isn't that... Uh, the, is the, last sentence, the last sentence of this is grammatically inarticulate. 
uh, the, the, the writer in her has a problem that he is going to take a picture of pregnancy photos with his ex-girlfriend who he cheated on her with and got pregnant. Uh, so let's settle this. Girlfriend, he's wrong for taking pictures with her. Oh, when yeah. he has a girlfriend or boyfriend. She is carrying my kid. It's the right thing to do. No. No, here's the thing. Yeah. If you get somebody pregnant and then you're like supporting enough of them to take pictures with them, you have to break up with the other yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> you can't like think you're going to like take pregnancy photos with another woman and then like still go. <laughs> it does uh, like the sentiment. It, I like, understand did, the did sentiment. You get that his he's like pregnant before or after. It sounds like with he cheated way, on the girl. Yeah, the with way that his, this is yeah. phrased, he like he cheated on his current girlfriend with the ex, got her pregnant, and then like they like sh they stayed together, but now this ex girlfriend is pregnant. Like I get the sentiment because he, he like he says in his thing is like she's carrying my kid. It's the right thing to do. That's a good sentiment. I appreciate the sentiment of like but you don't you have need created to, like, a child. Celebrate the pregnancy with your that's ex. A, that's a couple like, thing. That right? Yeah. It's like that extends as far as like, you like if you're not going to be with that child support. Yeah. And like if you're you not going to be with that the the mother, but you are going to still be a father to the child. That's one mm -hmm. thing. But right. like you don't there need to go is, take photos. Yeah, there is like there is supporting the person that you have created, and then there is doing weird couple stuff with your pregnant ex. Yeah. I really not, hope... Not expecting that your current girlfriend is going to either find out or have a problem right. with it? Well, it doesn't sound like he tried to hide it, and I think it sounds to me like this is the ex is like, come take these pregnancy photos with me, and he's like, well, she's got my kid. I guess I got to do it. And then the girlfriend mm -hmm. is like, no, the hell you don't. What's wrong with you? And he's like, I don't know what you want me to do. And I truly, in all of this, I can truly only hope that this this pregnancy photo is like both of them, uh, wearing like matching tracksuits with like a wolf photoshopped over the moon behind them, uh, and like the moonlight glistening off of their matched uh the mullets that I assume that they both have. Mm. Uh, so we we all solidly side with the girlfriend, right? Like that's weird, and yeah. don't do that. Yeah. Uh, the internet agrees. Not as much of the internet as I thought oh agrees. Uh, still a good percent. Seventy five percent of the internet chooses the girlfriend along with us. Hmm. Uh, still a solid quarter uh, supporting the go take pregnancy photos with your uh, illegitimate baby and your ex girlfriend. Wow. Uh, I would be don't... like, y you can leave now. Like. <laughs> I, yeah, I would have started that out with, like, my now ex. Right. Like, I also wouldn't have given you a chance if you cheated on me. With... True. <laughs> this is true. And yeah. got to go pregnant. It's a little, I say it's a little different if he, he, the ex told them he was pregnant after they had broken up and he was together with this new person. But also, like, even in that case, you don't need to go take pictures. <laughs> the okay, I have a couple of more of these. Uh, I don't think we need to do all of them because uh, we are about out of time here. Um, so let's. I want to do one. We'll do one more uh, to close out the uh, to close out the the evening. Uh, I'll I'll let you guys pick. Um, we have one about religion. We have one about. Uh, somebody having a lot of guy friends, uh, mm -hmm. and we have one that is uh, definitely going to turn into me and Emily arguing with each other about our own <laughs> relationship again. Uh, which of the three of those would you like to do to, to uh, set to, I'd to close say the, the religion end? one. Let's save that third yeah. one for another okay. time. So we like religion one. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that one too. I think that's uh, that's my favorite of the three. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the situation. My long-term boyfriend and I have been talking about getting married, but he just told me that for us to be married, I'd have to convert to his religion. I'm not a religious person, but the idea of formally converting makes me uncomfortable. But I don't want to lose him, and I think this is a deal breaker. If we want to get married, what Jeez, should I had do? Should that sooner? That conversation sooner? Apparently not. It's too late now. So option mm -hmm. one is if you're not religious and this is important to him, just do it for his sake. Marriage is about compromise. Option two is he shouldn't be asking you to do anything that makes you this uncomfortable. If he's a deal breaker, so be it. Better to find these things out before you get married. Uh, before, Better to find these things out before you get married rather than after. 
So what do we think? Can you, what are the options again? The options are either like, if you're not religious, what's the big deal? Just convert and get married. Mm. Uh, versus if you're really that uncomfortable about it, like, and it's going to be a deal breaker and he won't marry you, like, better to know this now and end this relationship rather than, like, get married and it's a problem and it's too late. I, yeah, I think almost that. Like, if you're, like, really, re like, if you don't care about religion, I think it's one thing. But if you, like, are not religious, period, like, you identify, it's more that you, like, it's more than you don't, like, not caring, rather, like, you are against religion, like, you know what I mean? Like, you shouldn't be converting to a religion if you are actually, like, anti-religion. The way is that I read this. Anti-religion, or is it just that she doesn't care? She specifically says, I am not a religious person, but the idea of formally converting makes me uncomfortable. The way that I read yeah, that. Like, and, and so there's, well, there's, there's a way that I'm interpreting this. The way that I'm interpreting this as as somebody for whom this strikes very close to home, um, I don't I don't read this, I don't read this as like I actively have a problem with religion, as much as I read this as like the idea of like the pomp and circumstance of going through like a formal conversion when like it would essentially be like a sham, in their in their mind it's like it's just for the show is. So like, what I take away from this is is less the problem with like religion itself and more the problem of like, boy, I sure like it sure seems really weird and uncomfortable for me to like do whatever inevitably like crazy ceremony is going to be involved in the conversion process when like it will be a lie, essentially. Uh, I... also, if, if like it doesn't say if he's does it say if he's like super religious? It it does appear that he is because he yeah. is the one insisting that she that has to like convert. A very, like I'm not convert. a super religious person, that, so it's not that we're like that incompatible. But that sounds like an incompatibility. Yeah, I was gonna say just that alone. If like somebody being super religious and somebody being not even not actually anti-religious, but just like I don't care, that yeah. already doesn't like. Here's the thing: it's like the possible conversion for marriage is one thing, but then like that is the beginning of like a lifetime of like having to make that same probably compromise like if you have kids and he's like well i our kids should be baptized into the religion and then you're like no so it's just i think it's just like a litany of problems that are probably not mm -hmm. okay so you guys both vote option two yeah it seems like they're talk. actually like incompatible okay. i disagree in this one so i will be voting against you guys here as, as i said because this resonates with me because i am a person who is for, granted, for me, it's a little different because I did not have to convert to a religion because I was brought up in this religion, though I no longer consider myself, like, a f practicer, a follower of that religion. Like, I didn't have to do any ceremonies or whatever, but, like, we got married through the, like, the whatever, you know, like, the official channels of this religion. And, like, so for me, this, like, this option one, like, if you're not religious and this is important to him, just do it for his sake. Like, that resonates with me, where it's like, I, well, no, religion is not a her, thing that like, I... It seems like more than just that she doesn't care about relig religion, it seems like she's like... Also, depending on what religion, converting is a major pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. It is, I don't get the sense from what I read that, like, this is a person who is majorly, who is, like, majorly against okay, religion. Okay, well, then like, if we're reading been... it that way, I would say it's the first, I would have said the first one, then. And because, like, they've been with this person for a long time. Obviously, this, this guy didn't just, like, spring religion on her. Um, yeah, I think you have to weigh the option of if this is the only way I get to marry this guy, mm -hmm. which is more, which is more important, marrying this guy or not converting to a religion. Um, well, split, split jury, I guess. And Emily, Emily is is one way or the other, depending on how we how we interpret. How we interpret um, it, yeah. I am interpreting that this this person is not necessarily against the idea of like religion. It's just not for them. They but they like are uncomfortable with the formal conversion process, which I understand mm -hmm. because it is like probably involves a robe of some sort and maybe like a large group yeah, of people it, it seeing somebody evolved, perform like, a rite over your like head. Maybe it, yeah. like maybe you get dunked in a river depending on what, what religion and we're talking for about. For somebody here. who's not a big believer, it's just going to be like, I'm signing up for like a six months worth of classes of lying to people. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that that was my that was always that's always been my big thing about the stuff is like it is essentially like camouflage of like do the things whatever whatever but it's a lie because you don't like you don't believe it um and like i guess the question is like do you give a shit about that or not you know for me the answer has always been like if that keeps the peace like i don't have to care about this uh to like do the stuff so i would vote option one that's just me Mm -hmm. um yeah for reading it like that i that's how i would vote too uh, well, 80% of the internet firmly believes that uh, this should be a uh, relationship-ending deal-breaker. Mm. Uh, 80% of the internet chooses option two. Better to find well, this I out think now it, before you It just really depends on how you're interpreting it. It does. Obviously, this is you can never you can never understand the totality of the situation just yeah. from one paragraph blurb. Yeah. Um, I hope I hope that this is like someday we find out that this like. The religion that this person's supposed to convert to is one of those like one of those like crazy uh like televangelist ones where they have like mega churches on TV and they like lay their hands on people and they pretend to have seizures in the aisles and stuff like that. Uh, because then that definitely flips my opinion immediately to be like, no, get out, get out now <laughs> before it's too late. <laughs> no, well, can. Uh, or it's like it's like Waco. Or it's a cult. Yeah, maybe he's in a yeah. cult. <laughs> Uh, well, I think that's enough. Let's settle this for one uh, for one episode. Settled what? with the amount of settling. That's I'm occurred. settled. I'm settled with the amount of settling. I don't know what. I don't know that we pulled an episode title out of anything we talked about tonight. Uh, because I don't. I don't think "blow your ass out of your out of your butt" <laughs> can be, or whatever whatever <laughs> it was. I forget now. I don't think that could be an episode title. Uh, <laughs> maybe Matt sneezes like a pansy. Uh, is a good one. I will have to. We'll have to see. Yeah. Um, but I think that's all for us this time on the Unstoppable Vision Podcast. Uh, you guys have anything to add? I don't think so. Alrighty. Well then, uh, until next time, don't forget to save up your pigeon points, and we will see you soon. Toodles. Toodles. <laughs>